Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending May 17th. First up, this one was sent in by Sir S.A. He's been a regular contributor to the show. Thank you for all your contributions. This is Meet Bat, an airborne wind turbine. I don't know if uh, you guys spent a lot of time when you were younger flying kites, but I always did, and I noticed even on days that didn't have a lot of wind, if you could get your kite up high enough, especially if you could tie together maybe two sets of kite strings and get it up there like a couple hundred feet, the thing would just fly all day long pretty much by itself and you wouldn't need any help. And if the wind was completely still where you were standing, there was still plenty of wind up there. In fact, it was fairly strong. Uh, I'd say probably more than half the time the string ended up breaking and the kite ended up going away and getting lost. So anyway, this guy has come up with an idea of a uh, a flying wind turbine and it looks kind of like a, an odd shaped donut. I'll put a little, a little bit of video of it right here. Um, it's 35 feet wide. They call it the bat because it's the buoyant air airborne turbine is what it's called and the, um, the company that's uh, putting this up is called Alti Aeros Energies. They say it can fly up to about 2,000 feet according to uh, FAA regulations and still be uh, compliant. I don't know, in my case, being so close to an airport, probably when you're closer to an airport, that wouldn't quite be the case. But uh, supposedly this is uh, way less expensive than putting up a tower. I can agree with that, probably with less infrastructure. They don't give an exact price. I'm guessing since towers cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, you're probably talking maybe tens of thousands of dollars for this. And for rural areas, this can power up to 12 homes. So must produce quite a decent amount of power. There's also, if you read this article down to the end too, he's not the only one in the um, running to do this. They're trying to get this uh, up and running in about 2015, but there's also two other versions too. One's a flying blimp, and uh, let's see, the one is Google's Makeni Turbine, it's called. It got its name from the Hawaiian word for wind, and this one's going to look kind of like an airplane. So there's an airplane type of design, and then somebody else is going to come up with a blimp type of design called the Power Ship the Ontario LTA Wind Powers Power Ship. So there's three different places working on this, three different outfits, so it must be something that has quite a bit of potential for three different uh, people working on it and everything. But yeah, yeah, as usual, all the links to the stories and everything like that will be in the description below. Uh, next up, if you're not living under a rock, you've probably noticed that things have been going on in the Ukraine, especially between Russia and the Ukraine and uh, uh, there was the protest in the streets and the overthrow of the elected government and then Russia concerned for their citizens bringing troops into um, they say to protect the Russian citizens that live in the Ukraine well that started a whole diplomatic squabble between the US and the uh, former Soviet Union Russia now and so what's ended up happening is just like uh, we give our sanctions uh, we get them right back to from Russia and we're kind of in a weak position right now as far as the space program so guess what this is a little uh, word from the deputy minister and if you didn't think this was going to be coming um, you probably uh, didn't know the space program too well, but here, Russian Deputy Prime Minister Dmitry Rogozin warned the United States, after analyzing the sanctions against our space industry, I suggest to the U.S. to bring their astronauts to the International Space Station using a trampoline. Uh, yeah, I guess they're not threatening to leave our astronauts stranded up there. I guess right now there's one U.S. and two Russian astronauts up at the space station, so they're not threatening to leave them stranded. I guess when their time is up, they will bring them home. But... Uh, yeah, it may very well be that if we keep up with our sanctions, uh, shutting down some of the bank accounts and stuff like that, uh, it may be the end of the manned space program unless we can get something going there. Evidently, Elon Musk from SpaceX has said that he's pretty close to being able to uh, take his private missions to the International Space Station that we actually do for hire, and uh, he may be able to switch over and bring some of our astronauts up above, up, uh, up on, onto the International Space Station. But the other thing that uh, Russia said there definitely, well, it's, who knows definitely, I mean, it has, has yet to been decided. This is just, you know, back, back and forth spatting. But they, they're claiming that uh, they may put a 2020 deadline on the International Space Station, whereas we want it to go to around 2024. And I guess according to them, if they're correct, the Russian part of the space station can operate independently without the American part, but it doesn't work in reverse. If they shut down the Russian part, I guess the, the U.S. part is so dependent on it, it can't work the other way. So, yeah, you got to be kind of uh, wary about it when you decide to put sanctions against another country. They're just as uh, able to put sanctions against you. And this is going to affect our space program in a big way if we don't get this taken care of. This next one's from BBC News Health 
from my friend Lens Kapoff. And this is Explore Your Body Clock. What kind of person are you? Now, according to this, uh, it's just a little, it's kind of a cool, it's a little five-question quiz, and I took it, and according to it, I'm a balanced person. Um, I think myself, I'm more active, really, and uh, although the, they say supposedly people in the morning are better, I'm, I think I'm a lot more active and a lot more alert between like 1 and 3 in the afternoon. But if you get a chance, look at this over. It's called Body Clock, What Makes You Tech from BBC News and Health. And uh, it just, it's just a little article talking about what kind of a person you are, morning, afternoon, evening person, um, stuff like that. And if you get a chance, take the little quiz. Kind of, kind of a little fun thing to do. I notice people on Facebook have been running little quizzes, too, about what type of person. Obviously not a real super scientific thing. I mean, these are broad, broad generalizations, so I would not take this very seriously at all. So, uh, but just something, something a little fun to do if you like to take uh, little science quizzes of a type and find out what type of a person you are, or uh, at least their best guess as to what type of person you are. Okay, this is from spacetelescope.org, the shrinking of Jupiter's great red spot. I was not aware of this too, but I guess the red spot is about one-third the size it used to be in the past. Uh, not quite, but just about one-third. It used to be 41,000 kilometers, and now, since they've been measuring it, it's shrunk down to approximately, let me get the thing here, it's, I think 16,000, let's see, where is it here? 16,500 kilometers across. So um, this is between, let's see, 1979 and present, and it's also uh, assuming a more round shape instead of oval shape. So I guess if you had a telescope that was capable of um, observing, just barely observing the great red spot, it may be too small, depending on the type of telescope you have. But uh, as usual, uh, they don't really know a lot about it. They just know it's happening, but I guess they're coming up with theories and stuff like that. Um, I'll read you a little expert. In our new observations, it is apparent that very small edges are feeding into the storm, said Simon. We hypothesized that these may be responsible for the accelerated change by alternating the internal dynamics of the great red spot. So, um, as usual, that's the best guess they have right now, but yeah, for some reason the red spot is shrinking. Um, I was kind of wondering if on our lifetime, too, it would be possible that the red spot would totally disappear, too, and then maybe another spot form of some type or just uh, not have one for a long time. Don't really, you know, we only have a few hundred years of history to be able to go by. And last up, this is from a friend of mine and fellow Moto vlogger. This was something I'd looked at before. It's the jet boil cooking system, and uh, she demonstrates. This is wheels, not heels, and she's a Moto vlogger, and she's doing a demonstration. She got the jet boil Java press. They all work basically the same. Um, what they are is just an effective way using very small amounts of fuel to get water boiling really quickly. I've seen some people get this. Uh, from lighting it to the water boiling in about one minute under optimum conditions, but they say typically more like two to two and a half minutes. Uh, the only people I saw in the reviews that even complained about it were people that said they were 12,000 feet in altitude and five degrees with the wind chill, uh, said they had a little trouble getting it to operate. So um, what it basically does best is in a container the size of a giant drinking cup, and that's basically what it is. If you think of a giant coffee cup or something like that or a giant... Um, uh, container that you drink pop in or something like that or like a big gulp everything fits inside it you take it apart uh, assemble it and get the water boiling I would say if you look at it on Amazon they run about 80 bucks don't go everybody's pretty much said unanimously don't go for the cheaper system to save about 15 bucks they got the zip system that doesn't have the self igniter and uh, maybe a few other things to pare it down in price uh, most everybody that's had one of those said it's not really worth it. Go with the flash personal cooking system. It also does have an accessory included now with the newer systems. I have seen some other reviews of it, and I guess they include a little stand so that you could put some kind of a pot or a fry pan on it or something like that. The people that have used it said it's kind of not really excellent results because it's more like concentrating a flame in a little spot. So if you want to cook bacon and bacon and eggs, you could probably get by and do it, but it will not come out really optimum because. The whole thing behind this working so effectively is the fact that it concentrates the heat in a small area and gets the job done. But I'll show the first 30 seconds or so of my friend's video, and then I will give you the link. And please go to her site, watch the entire video, and any questions uh, from somebody that's got personal use. I've got secondhand information. She has personal on-hands use of it, so I would say direct any questions to her about it. So anyway, that's about it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.
Hey everyone, this is Wheels Not Heels. We are cooking with the Jet Foil Java Press Cooking with Gas. I'm going to show you my personal cooking system that I'm going to take on the trip with me. It's very compact as you can see. This is the Jet Boil Java Press. Um, you can see it's not very big, not very wide, and uh, you can make tea with it make coffee with it, or boil some hot water to add to some dried food. Okay, let's get right down to it.